Hello, everybody, and welcome to this second ICA online conference of 2021 on safer chemicals. It's again online, uh, showing the whole impact of the pandemic and what it has on society. This is an immediate change in the whole way we live. But of course, the whole Green Deal sets a new target that we need to get to. And I think if I look at the challenges, there's always opportunities. And this conference is another example of those opportunities that come with these challenges. Opportunity number one, this conference is obviously a lot more sustainable than if you all had flown to Helsinki to watch us in live. Although I deeply miss the interaction, I think that the outreach that we have with this con online conference is amazing. This is probably the biggest event that ICA has ever held, thanks to it being online, thanks to you registering for it. And I think it links very nicely to the topic of this session of my previous speaker, uh, of the previous speaker, uh, Florica, who mapped out the policy of the chemical strategy and its framing, and mine, where I will link up with how we see the actual work on regulation feeding into those policy objectives. But let me start with the three words in my title and the goal, sustainability, innovation, regulation, and how that drives new chemistry, new chemicals on the European market. Start with sustainability. It's been redefined through the European Green Deal in all its facets. And it's clear that there's a whole societal change, socio-economic change that is necessary and set out and spurred by the European Commission and the institutions in driving Europe forward to meet the 2050 goal of climate neutrality, but also a ver variety of other goals which are deeply interlinked with climate neutrality, which is circular economy, higher safety on chemicals, zero pollution, all these policy objectives which have been mapped out. And then comes in our little area of chemicals, the centerpiece of the chemical strategy where Florica mapped out the policy objectives. Clearly, chemicals is core to actually meeting the, the, the Green Deal objectives. Without a change in the chemicals we have in the market or we produce, we will not be able to meet climate neutrality. That's clear from the Commission's policy documents, which support the climate neutrality aim. A fundamental change in the chemicals we use and in the way we produce them is needed. Circularity brings another huge challenge. Hardly any material we have on the European market, world market for that matter, are circular today. So we need new materials, which mean new chemicals and new ways of creating circularity of those materials. All of that means great innovation change is necessary. Huge opportunity. And if there's a country or a region uh, in the world which can meet that challenge, I think Europe is the one. We are the center of innovation when it comes to chemicals. We've proven that over and over again. And we've shown also that Europe is sustainable in innovation. Now we just have to be sure that that sustainability also maps out in the chemicals manufactured. So we can take the leading position that Florica mentions that Europe wants from a policy perspective. If I pick up some of the topics that Florica mapped out as being the objectives of policy, then I can comment and reflect on how to do that from the perspective of the technical and scientific implementation. She mentioned the need to increase protection, uh, this as part of the zero pollution agenda, but also as part of the whole circular economy and overall protection of European citizens and the environment. She said that this needs innovation and a drive for innovation. She mentioned the need to create efficiencies in the implementation of our whole chemicals uh, framework from a, of legislation by creating more simplification and consolidation in order basically to achieve the same objectives more efficiently. 
so that we can afford increasing the level of protection and pushing towards better and more clear directed innovation for sustainability. And she mentioned enforcement. And I think the thing that ties all those four together is clearly cooperation. So let me uh, comment on those five topics individually. Start with the increased level of protection. The way we see the, the chemical strategy and the many other goals mapped out and where chemicals plays a central role, it can be achieved with the current uh, way and, reflect, and, and, and infrastructure we have, which though needs significant improvement in efficiencies and better adaptation to the changing policy objectives. But the system as such is robust, does deliver, and is able to adjust. That's basically what we see from our perspective of doing the work on the ground of the science and technical uh, implementation. Looking back 15 years of REACH and CLP, we basically feel that the framework as such is strong and robust, but many, many things need to be changed in its details in order to make the current, the objectives of that legislation uh, work out, but also to meet the new higher level of protection objectives as they are set out. We think, for example, that the way in which we implement REACH and CLP can be increased, if the efficiency can significantly be increased in order to meet the increased demand of risk management. We also think that, on the other hand, on the input side, that the science and the technical machinery that we use can be simplified so that less efforts are needed by industry and authorities to achieve the increased risk management. On the innovation side, I think it's also clear that we need predictability for industry so that they know where we are going over the next 30 years and then regulation and a competence center like ICA uh, can help industry move in that direction. But clearly it is them that needs to move and therefore our innovation agenda as is mapped out in the chemical strategy and definitely also faceted in many of the other commissions uh, policy documents which map out the whole Green Deal is very supportive. And the starting point of looking at what is actually a sustainable chemical is something where we think there's quite significant um, experience in the current legislative implementation that can help uh, define such a chemical. Evidently, it is a policy decision, what is sustainable and what isn't, but the tools to help actually convert that policy decision into technical rules that are predictable for industry to actually design chemicals towards, we think the current experience um, is uh, sufficiently solid to uh, help um, set criteria uh, for what is a sustainable chemical and thereby drive innovation. Finally, on the simplification, we could not agree more from the perspective of the workhorses in Europe implementing legislation. Um, what we definitely see is that REACH, CLP can be improved in their efficiency internally, but the interlinkages with other legislation definitely are not working the way that we had hoped for when we started out on the REACH and CLP journey, and definitely not in the best interest um, of, of Europe. It is not efficient the way that the legislation interlinkages. And there's quite a lot of policy development needed in order for us to develop the tools and the processes which enable the various pieces of policy framework to work much more efficiently together. And of course, it's evident efficiency gains in the interaction between legislation means that we can achieve the same level of protection with less resources and thereby we can afford in, from the resource perspective to increase the level of protection by doing more since we've gained efficiencies. All of this we also believe 
cannot work unless there's a concerted effort on enforcement. We see today that industry struggles with the, the complexity and the breadth and depth of obligations that stem from just legislative instruments like REACH and COP. Where there's a link between an industry obligation and market access, industry does better. Where there's no link, there is they do less good. And therefore, without ensuring a better enforcement of the legislation, we cannot have an equal playing field and a well-functioning internal market. Competitiveness and innovation are not supported. So that is definitely needed. What is also clear is that industry is overall struggling and therefore uh, assessment of why and how better to utilize the obligations on industry to get a better functioning uh, protection, but also better functioning internal market and ultimately get us on the path of sustainability in a better way is also needed. And if I link up finally, cooperation, I think that that is also a key. It's a key in the work that we do in the European Chemicals Agency, but it's also key in success overall. So reaching out and working together and seeing this here as a collective exercise where each has their role. And sometimes in each of our roles, of course, we play, we, we have a responsibility to um, input from our competences, what we see. But if we all are able to do that in a trustworthy way, agreeing that what we are trying to achieve here is very clearly mapped out in the Green Deal, then I'm also sure that we'll be able to um, meet the challenges that the world, and in particular our citizens, have mapped out and have clearly told to us that we need to meet of having a sustainable Europe by 2050 um, can actually be met. So with those words, I'm looking very much forward uh, to the next sessions. And I uh, invite you to go and join the session where we will continue this very discussion. We have invited colleagues from the Commission, CEFIC, CHEMSEC, and the downstream users of Chemicals Cooperation Group, Duke, to share their reflections on the Green Deal objectives and in particular, how can we get there jointly uh, and together efficiently? So please, um, you're more than welcome to join that discussion and see you there. Thank you very much.